Friends, it's Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead, and I'm back with another weekly video where I'm just going to share with you everything that we've been up to here on the homestead. So in this video, we will be talking about winter sowing. That's a way of planting seeds um, that I'll explain later in the video. We also have an Azure Standard grocery haul. This was our first Azure Standard order since December, and this is restocking after the pantry challenge, so I'll show you everything that we got. And we also did a few canning and food preservation projects. So if this is something that interests you, why don't you stick around and we're going to get into it. We're just starting our week out here with some bread baking with my little helper Levi. He always enjoys helping me in the kitchen. I find that this age five to six is when they really enjoy helping. I had an empty salad container here and so I decided to sow a few more chive seeds because you can never have enough. The weather has been very strange here in Ohio. We're going between, we had one day last weekend where it was nearly 70 degrees and then today the high is only 23 degrees. So it's really crazy weather. I'm not able to do a whole lot of gardening outside yet. So we're still just sowing seeds here and there indoors to kind of um, fulfill that gardening bug that we've been bitten by. So getting more chive seeds in and then next week I'll be doing the bulk of my seed starting for things like tomatoes and my herbs and I'll take you along for that then. As mentioned we're on our way this week to pick up our Azure standard order. Our drop point is about an hour away from us and this is the first time since I wasn't running errands during the pantry challenge. Whoa gas got extremely expensive so whew, that was um, a hefty bill getting up to our order. All right, we are at our Azure delivery point. Our drop point is about an hour away. <laughs> and so the cost of fuel to get to our drop point definitely has to be added into the cost of the food we get from Azure. And so typically I order every month, the drop comes once a month. But since you, you saw the price of gas that uh, um, was over $4 a gallon to fill up today, and knowing that gas prices are probably gonna continue to rise as they have been, I decided to do two months of an order at once. So the order I placed that I'm picking up today is March's Azure order and April's Azure order for my family. I typically try to spend about $400 out of my $800 grocery budget each month at Azure and the other $400 is spent at um, local grocery stores. But this order today came to about $700 because I knew I wanted to place both months order at once to save on fuel costs. So I will not have to come up here again until May and that'll be helpful. So um, the kids just finished up the lunch. I packed them, oh, she's got her juice box in her mouth. I packed them a little bit of apple juice and they had a sun butter sandwich. You still have it on your face. I need to get you cleaned up, buddy. <laughs> um, so we get up here about 20 minutes early so that the kids can eat and I can get them all cleaned up. And then once the truck pulls in, we just load up our stuff and then we have an hour trip back home. So um, the kids do really well. They're very good in the car. They're good travelers. So. All right, guys, are you ready to get our stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got chocolate yeah. chips this time. Does that sound good? Yeah, I know. All right. I'll get the chips. You'll get the chocolate chips? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So we're back home and I'll start by showing you the frozen stuff I got. I got three bags of these organic whole cranberries because I have a project planned to can these into cranberry juice that I will show you later in this video. So I just bought a three pack to try that out. Um, those will be good. And then I got a case, 12 packages of organic green peas. And we're just kind of restocking the freezer a little bit. And then I also got a case, 12 bags of these hash browns that are great for my breakfast casseroles. So nice convenience meals as we head into gardening season here. I need easy stuff like these hash browns. Those will be really helpful. All right, and here's the bulk of the dried goods that are going inside that don't go in the freezer. I'll start here. The, I got a six pack of these brown rice cakes. We like these. I can't have gluten. So if I want a sandwich, like an egg salad sandwich or something like that, I will often use this as like a slice of bread and just smear the sun butter or the egg salad or whatever on top of those. And it works really well. Um, I find that the baby loves those for snacks too. They're just great. And we go through about a hundred pounds of potatoes in a two month period. So I got 50 pounds of organic red potatoes. And I also got 50 pounds of yellow potatoes. I'll show you how I store these a little later on so that I can prevent them from sprouting 
before the end of the two months. We got another jar of coconut aminos. I had bought one in my last grocery haul, but just decided to have an extra as backup in the house. And then this is Adam's favorite sushi ginger. I went ahead and got a little jar. He eats this not just with his sushi, but also just as a side dish with other meals. He just loves the taste of ginger. So I got him this. It's his favorite brand. It's really good. And then we also needed a jar of coconut oil because we used up the last of it during the pantry challenge. Just replenishing a staple here in our house. Um, Gabriel is not just allergic to dairy. He also has an anaphylactic peanut allergy. And so we use sunflower seed butter as our peanut butter replacer. And I need these for quick meals right now. Also for quick meals, gardening season is upon us. I really want to get into making my own rice pasta. And I'm going to take you guys along on that journey when I finally have time for it. But in the meantime, this was on sale. So I went ahead and picked up a case, 12 bags of this brown rice spaghetti. And spaghetti is just a really easy meal that I can make as we get into the, the busy gardening days. So it's really easy to just boil up some noodles and empty a jar of tomato sauce on them. All right. And then I also got 12 jars of this tomato paste. This isn't my usual brand. I usually get it in the cans, but they were out of that and this was on sale. So I got a 12 pack of this and I do like these little glass jars. They, I wash them out and repurpose them for various things. So that is a good purchase there. Then down here, we needed a case. We got 12 jars, I believe, of the organic coconut cream. This is what I use to make my coconut cream yogurt. I also use this to make ice cream or whipped cream for the kids and trying to show you the ingredients on this because some of the coconut creams you get, there it is, have a lot of kind of extra ingredients in them, but this one is literally just coconut cream. So we really like that. And I nearly used up all my taco seasoning over the pantry challenge. So I got some cumin and some onion powder. I already have some bulk paprika in the house and the other ingredients that I'm going to need. So I'm going to mix up another batch of bulk taco seasoning. A lot of people don't know that Azure Standard carries gardening supplies like seeds and plant starts. And I have been using them for eight years and have always had great success with their gardening supplies. So I just picked up some random bean seeds. I can never have enough beans in, in my seed uh, stock. And then also this is my favorite type of lettuce that I grow. It's just beautiful lettuce. It doesn't bolt on me when it gets warm. So I just picked up another package because this is what I plan to sow a lot of um, in terms of lettuce for our family. And at this point, I'm pretty stocked up on seeds now. There isn't really anything else that I need. And then we, I decided to get 10 pounds of organic grapefruit. The kids love this as a snack, and sometimes it's just a nice addition to breakfast. So I like to keep that in the house whenever Azure has them on sale. I go ahead and pick that up. So it's all I've never been disappointed with their uh, citrus fruit when I've bought it. And then believe it or not, we go through more than one of these five pound baking powder uh, packages per year. I only have about this much left in my current uh, container. So I went ahead and stocked up on another one. Baking powder does go bad. So I wouldn't recommend buying this in bulk unless you do a lot of baking. And we certainly do. And then just a little five pound bag of whole blue corn. I grind this down in our grain mill. The kids sometimes just love to have blue corn cornbread or I just use it as you would a regular yellow corn uh, cornmeal. And then speaking of yellow corn, I had to get some masa. I still do plan to work on making my own masa using our cow lime and um, ground flour that we have here in the house. But I just need this on hand because there, I might not get to making masa here in the busy season. And then of course, as I promised the kids, a big old thing of dark chocolate chips, allergy-free, dairy-free chocolate. This is something we've been missing. And last but not least, all of the big bags of grains and things. We'll start here with a 50 pound bag of organic cane sugar. And we are getting low on that. We're not completely out, but I just decided to restock since I knew we would run out in the next two months. 25 pounds of organic rolled oats. We can never have enough of that in the house. I got 25 pounds of buckwheat grits. You guys know we use that for buckwheat pancakes and a cereal. And then 25 pounds of split green peas for our split pea soup that the kids love so much. And then finally, a 50-pound bag of organic all-purpose flour. This is what David loves to use for his baking. So I went ahead and got him a bag. And that is my Azure standard haul for 
the next two months. So it came to about $700 and that was a, a great haul. We got stocked up on a lot of what we needed. So let me show you again how we store these potatoes. I have this little cabinet here in my kitchen and my kitchen stays relatively cool throughout the cooler months because we you know, don't have a furnace that heats the whole house. And so if I just put these potatoes here in this dark cabinet, this will prevent them from sprouting. Now, they do sometimes sprout, but you can still cut those off and use the potatoes and they'll be fine. We'll go through that by May. That's how I store them. The day of and the day after an Azure standard delivery is kind of hectic in my kitchen. I've got bags of grain everywhere. I've got little bags that need to be put away and stored away on the pantry shelf. So there's a lot of cleaning of my kitchen that needs to happen. I end up having to go through my gallon size glass jars and I kind of consolidate things and um, put things in smaller containers so that I can use my glass jars to fill with the five pound bags of different items that I just purchased. And then I have to go and refill my big five gallon buckets, which is what I'm doing here. And it's just, it's kind of nice because Azure standard time is just a good time for me to do reorganizing in the kitchen and just make sure that everything is stored away properly and uh, that there's room for everything. Remember, a lot of the bags of grains that we got, like oats and things, I will put in the freezer for at least two days to let it uh, kill any potential weevil or other pest eggs that could be in the grains. And then we'll bring that out and thaw it before I put that into my buckets. So not everything goes directly into its permanent storage container. Okay, and on this day, it was Miss Grace's birthday. My oldest daughter turned 11, and my son David here is working on her birthday cake. I've mentioned in many videos before, David wants to be a baker when he grows up. So he pretty much bakes something every day, whether it's a loaf of bread for the family or a pie for dessert or especially birthday cakes. He refuses to let anyone else make birthday cakes, including me. Um, I often have to fight him to make his birthday cake because I want to do it for him, but he makes a delicious dairy-free birthday cake. I've shared the recipe before. I will share it in the description below so that you guys have that. And then while he's working on that, I am working on getting our jugs ready for winter sewing. I have done a whole video before on the specifics of winter sewing, and I will link that in the description so you can learn a little more about it. But basically, this is just a way of planting seeds here in the spring outside in our zone. We're right on the edge of zones five and six. Some years it acts more like a five, some years it acts more like a six. And so if I want to start some seeds outdoors, I need the protection of these little jugs that act like greenhouses to protect my young seedlings on days when the weather can sometimes get below freezing here throughout the spring months. And so I just collect my jugs throughout the winter. I collect them from apple cider. Um, I'm using olive oil jugs, vinegar jugs, anything that is kind of clear enough to let light through it. And then I'll show you in a minute how I cut those so that they can be used as a greenhouse. But this is just kind of something we do every year because we do not have a greenhouse outside yet and we have to make do in the meantime. I love working in the kitchen with my children. So just hanging out with David while he's working on the cake and I'm just working on some gardening projects. It's really nice. So here is how that jug works. I just cut it so that there's a hinge left and then I poke some holes in the bottom of the jug for drainage. And then I'll show you in a little bit how we're going to seal that once we plant inside it. So it really is that simple. You can use, like I said, any kind of clear plastic container. And um, in a minute, we'll get into the details of exactly how that works. But in the meantime, just helping David finish up his cake here. He um, His favorite things to bake are birthday cake and biscotti. So he's becoming quite... Um, good at making both of those items. The family really enjoys having a baker in the house. It's such a blessing to us. On Grace's birthday, the girls had gymnastics in the evening, and so we ate dinner before we left, and then David um, worked on finishing up the cake while we were gone. So when we came home, this is what we came home to, a cute little cake for Grace's birthday, and we were able to sing happy birthday to her.
Happy birthday, dear Gracie Ellen. Happy birthday to you. Yay! So we were being quiet because the baby was already sleeping. It was about 8 o'clock at night when we got home. So giving the kids a little bit of a sugar rush right before <laughs> bedtime. But it's a birthday, so I always do these special treats on birthdays. Okay, before we get to the winter sewing, let me show you this cranberry project that I said I was going to work on. So I got these three bags of frozen whole cranberries from Azure Standard. And what we're going to do is can these into juice. I have seven quart size jars here. And I'm going to do this the same way I do other juices like uh, grape juice or I've done blueberries this way. I just put about a cup and a quarter to a cup and a half of cranberries per jar and these are still frozen because they are going to thaw uh, before we can them. It's the same thing. This is the thing of grape juice that I made that just had whole Concord grapes in it filled with water and we canned it. And then when you want to use this juice, you just simply strain out the grapes and you're left behind with your juice. So this is the easiest way to can juice and that's why I'm doing it this way with the cranberries. Now when I want a cranberry juice cocktail, what I can do is use a quart of this grape juice and mix it with a quart of the cranberry juice and that will sweeten my cranberry juice because we are not going to add any sugar to this. You could if you like a sweeter or a sweetened cranberry juice. But I just did the whole cranberries here and I added some warm water to each jar to leave about an inch of headspace. And the cranberries are thawing in the warm water. And once they're completely thawed, you can see that it's already starting to turn a little pink. That pink will intensify over time. I'll show you. I'm going to add a jar. I'm using my four jars canning lids. You can get a coupon code in the description if you need some canning lids. Go ahead and check that out. And then we're just getting these rings on the jars. And we're going to process these in the water bath canner for 25 minutes. That's all you need to do to have cranberry juice. And I'm just adding my distilled white vinegar to prevent that mineral buildup on my jars. Now let's talk about winter sewing while that can. All right, guys, we're getting ready to do some winter sewing. I've done an entire video before on winter sewing and how I do that, and it'll be linked in the description. Basically, it's just taking these jugs that you saw me cutting up yesterday. We're going to plant seeds inside of them. We're going to tape up the hinge here and then set it outside. And this is going to act like a mini greenhouse. And so I typically do my brassicas and greens and things in these. So I can set them outside right now. We're going to have um, a high of only 23 degrees on Saturday. Our weather here in Ohio is kind of strange. We'll have days where it's 60 degrees out, and then the next day might be a day where it's only 30 degrees out. So what this will do is on the days where it's warm and sunny, those plants will get nice and warm, and the seeds will germinate, and then the little jug here will act like a greenhouse to protect the plants on the days where it's only you know 30 degrees out or 40 degrees out, and it might frost overnight and things. So. Um, this has been really effective for me in doing cold hardy plants. I haven't had the greatest success doing things like tomatoes and other warmer weather plants in them, but this is just the thing that I like to do to free up space in my grow light station that's right behind me here. I have a limited amount of space indoors and I like to save that for things like tomatoes and peppers and my onions that you've seen growing. And so I don't want to start my brassicas, my kale and my cabbages and things indoors if I can do it outdoors in these. So until we have a greenhouse here on our property, which is a future long-term goal, we make do. And it works out perfectly because I have a lot of these jugs. Um, you guys have seen before that I get a lot of apple cider from a local farm in the fall. And then I freeze them in the jugs. And then throughout the winter as we use these up, I just rinse them out and set them in a bag in my garage for winter sowing. Um, in a normal year, I would start this process in January or February. Usually in January, I'm itching to plant some seeds. I'm just ready for gardening season to begin. And so I get out the jugs and this kind of satisfies that urge. <laughs> I set them outside, they'll get snowed on and they'll be just fine. It's almost the middle of March and I'm just now starting these, which is fine. It'll still serve its purpose, but um, I just didn't get to it. We had a really busy January and February this year. So I'm kind of late to the game in doing this, but not 
late in terms of the functionality of these, just late in my own timing. Um, like I said, normally it's to do it because I just have the urge to plant something early. Now I'm just planting them because it's crunch time and I need to get them, <laughs> need to get them done. So if you have any more questions about what we're about to do, um, just check the link in the description for the video on winter sowing. But I'm gonna call the kids down. They always enjoy doing this. Let me show you what we're going to plant. We are gonna do four different varieties of kale. I'm gonna do this, hi. hi. <laughs> I'm gonna do this Russian red kale. I always have great results with this. I also have another kale called a scarlet kale. This one, um, this one is a little more curled than this variety, but I love purple food, so I always like to do a little bit of purple kale in the garden. I'm also going to do this blue curled scotch. It's just a really prolific one, very abundant harvest from that. And then, of course, the dinosaur kale. Um, you'll notice that these have are like your typical kale you'd find in the store that has the curly leaves. And this one is kind of a flatter leaf with the bumps on it, but... I like to have a variety of kale. Can never have too much. It's easy, isn't it? Do you like kale? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy to preserve. Um, you can can it. You can freeze dry it. You can just freeze it. So we use it in smoothies and in all of our meals. I also like to make kale powder. So we grow a lot of that. Just one minute, guys. Let me talk here, okay? And then you can help me. We're just going to do one set of broccoli for now. And this is the kind that I'm doing. I tend to buy a lot of my broccoli starts from a local greenhouse because I have better results in growing it when I do that. But I am gonna try some from seed again this year. I always try. <laughs> so this is what we're doing. We're gonna do one jug of arugula just to have some early salads. Arugula is a cold season crop. Um, it's a little more hardy than a typical lettuce. So we're gonna grow that. We are gonna do one type of cabbage, just a Brunswick cabbage. Like I said, cabbage is another one. I'll buy some starts from our local greenhouse. <laughs> you guys, quit being silly. <laughs> we're just gonna do one jug of these. All right, one jug of mustard greens. This is an Osaka purple. It's a beautiful, just a beautiful leaf. I love it. It's fun to have pretty food sometimes. Oh my goodness, these boys. <laughs> and finally, let me just get through this, buddies. Swiss chard, we're gonna do one regular green chard. This is a Ford hook. And then one we're gonna do um, a pretty colored chard. Chard is sort of like the one green that I can always grow that is just um, prolific. I, It's just easy for some reason. Some people have great results growing lettuce or maybe they have better results growing kale or whatever. Chard is the one thing that it's like really hard for me to mess up in my garden. It grows really well around here. All right, well, these guys are itching to help me, aren't you? You guys want to help me plant? Oh, all right. And that right there is a prime example of why I've been choosing to do uh, voiceovers on my videos more frequently than I do kind of recording myself with the children present in the room because sometimes it can be very hard to hear me over the sounds of the children or a lot of times we have the freeze dryer running in the background of the room and that produces some audio that makes it hard to hear. So that's why I have kind of switched to doing these voiceovers and I hope that's okay and you guys enjoy this format uh, because it really is a much uh, less stressful way for me to get the things out that I want to say without the distractions and the noise of the children. So anyways, all right, back to the winter sewing. As you can see, we're just filling the bottom of these jugs with some, uh, you can use potting soil or you can use seed starting soil. And we put the seeds in and then water them pretty thoroughly. And then we take the hinge and shut it and take a piece of duct tape and just close the hinge. It really is that simple. And then this jug serves as a mini greenhouse of sorts. It will allow uh, moisture in through the hole on the top. You do leave the lid off and it allows light through. So that's all the seeds need to germinate is light and moisture and heat that gets trapped inside the jug. So my kids always love helping me out with the winter sowing. It can be quite messy. So I do um, advise that you put something down on the floor before you let the kids <laughs> start messing around with the dirt. But I have a whole video on all the specifics of the this process. Check it out in the description and you can see what we sewed this week. Gracie did a beautiful job labeling our jars. 
Now, sometimes the sunlight can make the Sharpie fade on your jars, just a warning. So I often go out and if they're starting to fade, I will relabel just so I can remember what I have in my jars. But I've been gardening long enough that I can usually tell the plant starts apart um, just knowing what I had planted in them. But that's it. And we'll just come check on them. If it doesn't rain enough in a week, I'll come out and add some water to them. But that's it. That's all you need to do your winter sowing. And our cranberry juice finished canning up while we were doing the winter sowing. So I'm just going ahead and pulling these jars out of the canner. And as you can see, the color of them isn't extremely intense yet. That's because as these sit on the pantry shelf, that color will continue to intensify. So I don't suggest opening these jars for about four to six weeks. And then once they sit there for that long, you'll have some nice, healthy, cheap cranberry juice. Between the cost of my lids and berries, this is five cents per fluid ounce for that cranberry juice, organic cranberry juice, pretty cheap. But now I'm moving on to some apple cider vinegar. This is a jug of apple cider from a local farm. I bought it for $6 from a local farm last fall. And I just put a coffee filter over the top and stuck it in a dark cabinet. And as you can see over time, a mother began to form in there. And this is turned into apple cider vinegar. So I'm going to pour this out into my jars and show you how this works. So that mother that I mentioned that was forming on the top of the jug is starting to come out. I'm going to pull that out of the jar for you. If you've ever made kombucha, the mother of vinegar looks a lot like a kombucha scoby, but this is, is different. It's a different colony of bacteria, so you can't use this to make kombucha. This is only to be used to make vinegar. I'm storing that mother of vinegar in this jar because I will use that to kind of jumpstart a future batch of vinegar. If I stick that in the jug of apple cider, it will just make it turn to apple cider vinegar that much faster. And so I'm pouring all of this out into the jars. You will notice that the closer I get to the bottom of the jar, the darker the vine vinegar is getting. And that's because there is sediment in that apple cider that kind of settles on the bottom. And that's okay. It will end up just settling on the bottom of the vinegar as well. You could filter that out maybe through something like a coffee filter if you don't want the sediment in your vinegar but we just leave it in there and it's fine and it's safe to put on the shelf that way. So I ended up with one gallon of, app of organic apple cider vinegar for just $6. And it's that easy. It really is that easy, you guys. There's no sense in spending, you know, tons of money on organic apple cider vinegar in the store when you can make it this easily. And so I just put now solid lids on the top of these and these will go on my pantry shelf to be used whenever we need some apple cider vinegar. All right and last but not least I always have to share my weekly freeze drying adventures. So in last week's video you guys know that I tried to freeze dry whole dates that I had just halved and they were hard as a rock and still usable but not what I wanted. I wanted to try to make some date sugar so I'm wondering if I puree as I did here pureed the dates down into a paste and I freeze dry that, I'm hoping that that will make something that isn't quite as hard and that I will be able to then blend up into a date sugar after it freeze dries. We will see. And then this is just some leftover pasta. It was just like a penne pasta and some homegrown beef and a tomato sauce and maybe some vegetables. And I've never freeze dried pasta, so that's something I wanted to try. And then this was just some leftover beef and rice and spinach that I'm going to go ahead and freeze dry because it wasn't enough for a full meal of leftovers. And we will just put it in our long-term storage. So we're going to stick this in the freeze dryer and voila, here it is. <laughs> um, it was in there overnight and this is what it looked like the next day. So as always, rice freeze dries really well and the pasta turned out pretty amazing so I'm going to show you in a minute. I'll rehydrate this and show you what that looks like when you eat it rehydrated. But this is what I was most interested in. My date puree turned into, it is quite hard, but not as hard as the uh, freeze-dried dates where you can still rip pieces off. And surprisingly, we just decided let's not even turn this into date sugar because it tastes like toffee. This freeze-dried date 
pulp, I guess, or date paste ended up turning into something that tastes like a toffee or maybe a caramel, something like that. And so I'm letting Gabe try it and tell me what he thinks. And yes, <laughs> he, he really enjoyed it. It ended up being almost like a candy. And so I think I've decided that I want to do this now pretty regularly with dates because this is a refined sugar-free candy that I think the children will really enjoy eating. And I personally cannot eat any kind of refined sugar um, on the diet I use to manage my Crohn's disease. And so these dates can be like a candy that I can enjoy when I want a sweet treat. So this turned out to be a very pleasant surprise. We will not be using this for date sugar, although we could if we wanted to. We're going to use these as a candy. All right, so that was a success, you guys. Can't recommend that enough. Make sure you try this if you do have a freeze dryer. And if you want to learn more about freeze drying, you can check out the link to my Harvest Right freeze dryer in the description below. And um, they have a website with different sizes of freeze dryers available. And you can find the one that would suit your family's needs. We've been really enjoying having this freeze dryer and just experimenting. Okay, speaking of experiments, this was my pasta experiment. I have never tried rehydrating pasta, and I wanted to see what the texture was like after we did. And um, as you can see, the pasta kind of falls apart a little bit as you're stirring it around. But what I was really interested in was the taste and the texture of the noodles, if it would be similar to, uh, you know, a cooked noodle. And let's see Gabe's reaction. So, yeah, he said it was good, and he seemed to like it, so he would eat it. Although teenage boys tend to have hollow legs and will eat anything. <laughs> but I do think that he would let me know if he didn't like it. Now he wanted to try it just without being rehydrated, just the freeze-dried pasta. And he said it was good, um, but it was different. He much preferred it rehydrated, but he would eat it without being rehydrated. So now we'll see what the little guys say, see if they like it. So Levi, yeah, he said he liked it. He liked the taste of just the plain freeze-dried pasta. Now he wanted to try some rice, and he told me he did not enjoy the plain rice without being rehydrated, so I wouldn't recommend that as a snack. <laughs> but, all right, so I'm showing you what I'm going to do with these dates. I had to take a kind of a butcher knife here and try to chop them up, and I'm going to put them in pieces, but I have realized that there would be a much easier way to do this if I plan to do it again in the future. So while cutting it into these chunks worked just fine, I think what I would do is when I um, puree my date pulp down in my food processor, I'm just going to put it into little dollops on the parchment paper on my freeze dryer trays. And then as that freeze dries into the little dollops, it would already be cut apart for me. So I would just basically be making freeze dried candy pieces that I could just peel off of the parchment paper and put into storage. But as you can see, it's just... I can't even describe the flavor. It's like a toffee or a, a caramel. The freeze drying took the sugars of the date and kind of fluffed it up, puffed it up a little bit. And it's just, it's amazing, you guys. And then as you can see, there is kind of sugary powder at the bottom. If I did take this and run it through my blender, I could definitely blend it down into a date sugar that would work. But we enjoy this so much that we're just going to leave it as is. I got my little date candy in a jar. And I'm going to put it on the pantry shelf and all the other leftovers got put into mylar bags to go in our long-term food storage. So that was this week's freeze drying adventure that I thought I would just share with you guys. All right, that's it for this week from Three Rivers Homestead. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what we were up to. Next week, I'll be sharing more about the maple sugaring if the weather cooperates and we're going to get into the garden a little more. So I hope you have a great week, friends. We will see you later. Bye.